The Sabbath is the day that the Lord made for you and me to rest in and worship the King. Oh, oh, oh. The Sabbath is the day that the Lord made for you and me to rest in and praise the Creator. He made the heavens and the earth and the sea. He created all the living things that grow on the earth. He made the sun and the moon and the mountains, the visible and all that is invisible. The Sabbath. Is a day where you and I have holy convocation and meet with believers. Oh, oh, oh. The Sabbath is a day made for man, so we rest from all the labors that make us weary. He made the heavens and the earth and the sea. He created all the living things that grow on the earth. He made the sun and the moon and the mountains, the visible and all that is invisible. Day one, let there be light. Day two, he made the sky and the land. Day three, the trees, the flowers, and the grass. Day four, the stars and the moon. Day five, the fish and the birds. Day six, he made Adam and Eve. Day seven, stop. He rested. Sabbath day. He rested. Holy day. He rested. The day of rest. He rested. For you and me. Let all creation bow before His name. Thank you, Lord. He rested. Yesterday. He rested. So what should you rest? Lay your work aside. Hold the day. Let all creation bow before. Oh, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea. He created all the living things that grow. And all that is invisible For you made, made the heavens, heavens and the earth and the sea you made He created all the For living you things that roll the the He made the sun and the moon and the mountains The visible and all that is invisible Lord is holy Lord is holy
Greetings, beloved of my father. Well, we want to welcome those who are young and those who are young at a heart. Welcome to Reality Table. Yes, we are in an unprecedented year, and I know you don't need a rocket scientist to tell you the days that we are living in, but we are back at the Reality Table. Our setting has changed because you can also tell that the world has also changed. Here with me, I've got Pastor Dickett. Uh, just give us a thumbs up, eh? Okay, peace. That's what he likes to do. And we've got, uh, we used to call her Mrs. KK, but I think there's a new name, Auntie KK. Uh, oh, Mrs. KK. Oh, Mrs. KK. All right, that's fine. Uh, you're welcome. And we do have young people who are joining us, but because of the uh, COVID requirements, they can't be with us on set. Uh, they are uh, joining us from uh, different places. So I'm going to ask Ben, wherever you are, uh, you can just wave so that people know who is Ben. Ben yeah. is here. Oh, yes, that's Ben right there. And we've got uh, uh, our beloved sister all the way from the United Kingdom. And her name is Rumbi. And uh, Rumbi, you can just say hi to the people on set. Hi. Wow, that's what it is. And today our topic is elephant in the room. A big elephant in the room, my guy. Oh, a, a Pastor Dickett calls it a big elephant. Uh, why we're talking about an elephant in the room here? Yeah, there are things that we've probably not uh, gone out in the public and talked about, but yet we need to talk about some of these things. Could that be right, Mrs. KK? You're right, Pastor. Uh, what could be some of these things? Maybe just one or two uh, so that people know which elephant. Actually, it's, could it be one or many, but then we just... No, it's just that this elephant is very healthy. <laughs> it's so healthy. No one has taken it down. It, it, it's just one. Well, so Reality Table is taking a chance at this big elephant and see if we could talk about some of these things. Let me first uh, bring in probably one of the most difficult things. I'll start with you, Mrs. KK. The issue of virginity. Uh, is it still a virtue? Well, I think you would definitely say yes because you would expect that. But uh, you've got two sons. Is that right? Yes, Pastor. What are their names? Uh, Tino Tenda and Tino Bimba. So you are Tino Squared? Yeah. Well, assuming, assuming, I know their pastor's kids, they will never lose their virginity before they get married. Well, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be like the brother's keepers. You well, know. Let me tell you, uh, while you're keeping that brother, uh, they say the pastor's kids lose it before the elders' kids and the deacons' kids and all other kids. <laughs> well, that's what... it out there. <laughs> <laughs> but now let me ask you a question uh, before we cross over to Ben. Um, if would would you become comfortable or would was it proper if assuming uh, Tino Tino Juan, uh, who is your eldest son, mm -hmm. comes to you and say, "Mommy, you know what? I've just lost my virginity." Proper? No, I wouldn't say it's proper. But um, if at least yes, the guys to come and tell me, then it means we have a relationship. Because to me, that's the kind of discussion um, that can only happen between two people. We have something in common and who share, um, like we have a friendship kind of way of communication. Because the way I know uh, with most parents, it's very difficult for them to be talking to their children, more so to that extent where they can come and say, I have lost my virginity. But um, being a pastor's wife, and having PKs in the home, I wouldn't expect it to happen that way. Because I know they, we pray together, like we are in the 10 days of prayer. So I expect <laughs> them to be praying to keep themselves pure till the day when they will say, I do. Great expectations, as some would say. Can I put you on the spot before I cross over to Ben? Uh, Pastor Dickett, I would want you to come. Um, if Tino comes home and says, Mommy, I've lost my virginity. Are you going to give him a hug? And say, oh, I mean, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to see how a pastor's wife would react when, if, if it happens. If it, well, I know it won't happen anyway. Well, pastor, <laughs> I can't promise a hug. <laughs> Definitely. Maybe what I would just say for uh, that very moment, I will cry. <laughs> well, I, I think she'll do more than cry. You can tell she's on set and she doesn't want to uh, say uh, something like, Ben, um, what, would, what would you do, my boy? I mean, we want to talk about the parent uh, child. In this case, mother, son. I think that is the most... Um, I think and... maybe let's ask Ben a direct question because okay. Ben likes direct questions. Ben, would you tell, not your dad, because your dad is going to say, my boy, you did it. 
Would you tell <laughs> your mom that, Ma, I lost it? Not on the 10 days, during the 10 days of prayer, <laughs> but on the 11th day after prayer. <laughs> on the 11th day, Would then? Would you be able to say, on the 11th day, <laughs> while you were praying and fasting, something happened? Would you do it, Ben? Just, would you do it? All right, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Ivan, Pastor Dickett, for such a wonderful question. Like what you said, um, I really enjoy direct questions. Yeah, uh, personally, I will not tell them that uh, I, I lost my virginity. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's a white elephant you're trying to tackle. Your Why? Why do I have to tell them? You know, um, yeah, that was me. Um, not telling them. You know, what happens is that uh, with, with, with our parents, the way we, we have been raised, um, the way every parent raises a child. Maybe let me start by referring back to the Bible before I, I go into our views. At least, that, at least you know that, you know, we've been looking into these things. Um, it should be Genesis chapter 19, uh, verse, verse 8, if I'm not mistaken. 19 verse 8, you know, there's a scenario that happens, you know, with Lot. And he says, I have two of my daughters who have not known men. So we are having um, a father who knew that the daughters were virgins. I like it because they were virgins. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so there is no problem <laughs> knowing that we are virgins because you are, you are good. But now, with our upbringing, um, we have been told that, number one, no sex before marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I'm to go to mama and say, Mama, <laughs> you know what happened today? <laughs> I've lost my virginity. <laughs> if I was in Nigeria, I was going to say, Oh, coach. <laughs> so it's <laughs> as, as, as something that is not, um, it's not there. So um, it wouldn't be ideal to go and tell uh, a parent that um, I've lost my, my virginity, even if we have a solid relationship, because already it's, uh, it's betrayal. I would have betrayed um, not myself only, but I would have betrayed my, my parent. Because remember, when we lose our, our virginity, there are certain things that happen. It's either um, I've lost it because of, out of carelessness, it's either um, it's, it's something that just happened, or probably maybe I'd planned uh, to do it. So I'll get back to a point where I would need to explain. So they'll be like, okay, fine, my boy, sit down. Let's talk. Uh, how did it happen? I was like, uh, you know, when I was with Tino, uh, then, you know, he mixed my juice with them. That's another story. Or maybe I was kissing my girlfriend. Ah, oh, you're now kissing. You know, that's, that's, that, that's another story as well. So um, we, we don't need to get to a point where we're going to be stressing our, um, our, our parents by telling them uh, that we've lost our, um, our virginity. So, yes, as much as we want our parents to know how we've been living our, our lives. Remember, we've got um, different backgrounds, different settings, right? If it's, um, it depends. It depends, you know, with, with, with families. But whether you are, um, you are from Malawi, where I'm from, whether you are from Usumba Maramba Pungwe, or maybe whether you're from, anyway, you know, with every parent, they would want the best for their, um, for their kids. And me coming with a message that I've lost my virginity, you know, it's not a message that would be um, acceptable. But on the contrary, on the contrary, you know, um, whenever we do things in, in, in life, right, like what I've said, it depends with how you lost your virginity. Let's say, for example, it happened to a point whereby I have my girlfriend and then I overpower her and then I, or maybe I'm overpowered. You know, you know like I remember last time on the early table we talked about us dating older women. It can happen that Ben is dating, you know, an older woman, then uh, I will go for a visit, maybe, and then I'm overpowered, right? Remember, I'm the boy child, I'm overpowered. Yes, it happens. Some people be like, ah, Ben, does that happen? Yes, these women, they, they can overpower us. And then I'm overpowered, and then I, 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 I lose my virginity to, to him. I think I can then go to my parents and then try to explain my, 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 my story, even though I might experience a weep. Um, then, how, you know, why? Because, you know, there's things that can happen. Um, I have sex. Um, not knowing because of conscience, and then probably their STIs, those kind of things. So at least my parents should also know if it's in that case, so that at least I get counsel and I get uh, help. So uh, from my end, um, I know uh, we don't need to tell these people. <laughs> we are not <laughs> well, telling you. Well, that's, so <laughs> that, that's what Ben thinks. You see, you see, as Ben was talking, I yeah. don't know if it was just me, uh -huh. the examples he was giving, it was like, it's like, you only had to be in it to know those examples. <laughs> I'm not saying you was in it, being wherever you are. I'm just saying, but there's something that 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 
caught my attention from what he was saying. He was saying, uh, sometimes these things happen, sometimes, but there was an emphatic no. Whatever happens, I'm not telling them. So there's something that comes through my mind to say, so this whole fuss about marriage, we all know the parents look at that black suit and that white gown. I don't know if, I don't know who you're going to give this question to, or I don't know if the viewers are going to answer this question, but does it matter? Well, we don't have to worry about who's going to answer the question. It's obvious it has to be Rumbi all the way from the United Kingdom. Rumbi, uh, before Mrs. Kachairo and Pastor Dickett uh, uh, put in their thoughts on it, um, let me ask you a direct question. Do you think in the 23rd century, if that's what they call it, in the con contemporary, uh, now I think it's, I don't know what generation of, uh, should we call it Generation X? Squared. This is actually generation. Is it generation Y? Generation X. We are generation X. X. Z. So this is X squared. Z. 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 <laughs> Whatever generation you are from, is it still important for you to wear a white dress and put on a veil? What do you think, Rumi? Well, if you're asking me personally, it doesn't matter. I think um, a dress is a costume, so you can wear whatever you want. So, did you just say costume? <laughs> <as in, laughs> C O S T U M, like you're doing a drama or something like, like that. Like like I die. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, I do believe it's a costume. I think that um, just the, even the way it fits, everything about it. I think years ago it mattered. It was you know white purity, all those different things. Whereas now, that kind of association in terms of virginity, purity, wearing a veil, you know, you know, him lifting the veil, kissing you. How many times have couple kissed in the past? What does it mean? It doesn't really have that. It doesn't, it's not symbolic anymore. So to me, it's just something that people do. I'm not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing. I'm just saying it's tradition. So would I, do I think I have to? No, I don't have to wear all those things. Did you just say N O like uh, you're saying no? Your answer is I, I want to do it, but it's I'll like a soccer say, match. Uh, I'm when, they're about, when they're about to get to the gate, then and then the guy kicks the ball and hits the bar. And everyone goes, uh, "What is happening? Why just dropped us on?" Oh no, no, I won't do that. Let me come to you, Mrs. K K. Um, uh, Mrs. K K. Uh, what is the significance of the white dress and the veil, and is it still important and necessary in the contemporary? I mean, I mean, want you to look at, at the at, at, at the Christian worldview. Well, I'm, I'm happy that Rumbi has just highlighted what that Christian dress, um, the gown, the white one, what it means. It means purity. It means honesty. And um, when I'm looking at our kids, uh, my girl child's wedding, walking down the aisle, putting on that white gown, it means there is the bride coming in. And she is pure. So this thing of sex before marriage and stuff and whatever like i said i don't expect it because i've taught her well and i expect to see it and everyone else who's going to witness her wedding to witness that there is someone who is coming in with pure just like god expects us to be pure and i've taught her rumbi well that from adventure park and now she's in the ambassador club she should be pure. So honestly, she has to put it on. Just like God expects me to be holy. Remember the Bible says, be ye, ho ye holy as your father Amen. in heaven is, mm -hmm. is holy. So I expect that to my child. And I still believe that gown still symbolizes that, even in this day and age. I even in I, this I, COVID I, era. I, I think you are, you are very right. You are very right. Well, 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 well I, I think, let me, let me, I, I'm giving you, you know, the veil, the yeah. veil. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so excited because today I look like a bride. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to agree with you. The gown is holy. The veil is pure. But we're referring to the one wearing it. So is there a problem? Okay, the other question is when someone knows that I'm not uh, a, an, an image of what I'm putting on, should I then the, put on a, the, a actually, red dress? Actually, <laughs> this is what Rumbi is saying. She said it in passing. I don't know whether it was in passing or because she's far away from us so we couldn't hear what she was saying. She said, the guy's opening the veil, kissing her like they haven't been doing that, like really. <laughs> like, I mean, honestly. So it sounds like, are you serious? Like, so, so in my head, it's like, come to think of it, is that the first time they're kissing? And, well, and, and if, I, if wish, the, I wish Ben was here. You know, I'm now used to see, sitting next to Ben. <laughs> no, but Ben would have answered for us. <laughs> 
But we don't judge Ben. The Lord loves us all. Loves us. You see, the idea here is, I guess long time they thought when you wore that white and when you opened the veil, it may have been the first time, I guess. But if you notice some of the marriages these days, even the kissing is very professional. It's no, there's no mistake there. <laughs> there. There's no mistake that the guy is going for gold. The guy is, is Hussein Bolt. He knows where that lip is and he's, he's going for gold. So does this mean if I've lost my virginity as a girl, I shouldn't uh, wear that white dress or that veil? Uh, let's not even uh, pretend. We know our society is judgmental. Even church people are judgmental. Mm -hmm. Would you understand to say, oh no, um, she probably had a different trial in her life and she made a mistake. A righteous man falls seven times and gets up. <laughs> or we are going to look and say, hmm, I told you. I told you. I knew it. So isn't it better to wear the veil and have to deal with God on a personal level than to deal with members and people who judge you for for what they see. So I'm trying to ask wow. Ms. Katsuyaro to say, yes, the dress is pure. Mm -hmm. Yes, the veil is pure. Mm -hmm. But is, is it not because we are so scared to be judged that we end up just saying, you know what? We're just doing it Let's for just do it. as a norm. Yes. Yeah, um, I think now that I've listened to Ben and Rombi, I'm getting another kind of thought that was not with me to say, yeah, yeah, it's, something is happening there. Um, and so, now, sorry, are you saying, are you saying you're only realizing now <laughs> that there could have been something that is happening or you're... Kind of past that okay. because what, what I know is um, I've heard of people being raped at a tender age. That's not their own making. Not volition, yeah. Yeah, but this thing, like what Rumbi said that, you know, you are, you are being kissed. It's not the first time, which means our children are kissing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome and to reality table. Now it's, 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 you know what? It's so so let me, let me, let me, let when you say first. our children, let me, let me are you referring to the PK? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, parents at home, uh, please don't try this at home. But uh, my God, I'm, I'm just, you know what's so real to me is the way my Kachero is like so, so shocked. So shocked. That, that she knows kissing. <laughs> yeah, I don't, because don't. you know, I, 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 I have an angel at home, and I always, I think I should stop doing it, but I always give reference to my sons. I, I think they're doing well as far, <laughs> well, as, far as I know. So let, I let, really expect them to, you know, if they were girls. I was, I was youth director for the past three years. Okay. Uh, I can vouch for Tino. You have an angel at home, Mike. So you don't have to worry about that. Just make sure Tino and Ben don't meet. <laughs> what are you saying about Ben? Well, this is the reality table. We are talking about that elephant in the room. Things that we don't normally talk about, but we need to talk about. We really need that uh, relationship between the mother and the son, the father and the daughter, or let's just say the parent and the child, to talk about some of these things. I remember... But maybe, we... Pastor, before sure, you go. Sure. So, I think it, it's best for this... Um, people to tell us, they used to tell us, because if Tino was a girl, I think it would be good for me to know that she's no longer a virgin, so that at least when we charge the bride price, it won't be as much as we uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, if, if I was Tino, I would not even tell you, so, because so, 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 you are so. reducing the value. No, 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 you are coming Wait, wait, pass the ticket else. before, be, uh, wait, 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 I know you are itching, <laughs> let me go to Ben, Ben, <laughs> I am liking this one, Ben. Um, you know, the parents are saying, guys, I think it's high time that we remove the elephant out of the room. Come and talk to us about these things. Let's remove the Okonko father. would say, I'm the father here. You don't say some of these things. Uh, ben, would you go, not just about virginity, but things that are affecting in your life. How, how comfortable are you discussing these things? Pastor, I'm coming to you. Let me just hear Ben. All right, uh, thank you so much. Um, Make it quick and short. We're about uh, to go first. Ivan, uh, as Mrs. KK has talked about depreciation of valid fixed assets, <laughs> but um, I knew Ben would come up with something <laughs> like this. <laughs> so, you know, when, when, when there's a relationship, when there's a relationship between us and our, our parents, you know, like, like what I've mentioned, that you know, let me say, I've you know, I, I, I've said that it's not 
easy for us to go and tell them that we've lost our virginity, but the underlying factors that can, that can, can harm us as, as young people. I cannot have an STI and then sit with it and relax, and then when I walk, I walk like I've, been, I've, I've hit a stone. Um, <laughs> so when, 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 when I've got these underlying factors, um, you know, I need to, to sit with my, with my dad, right? I need to sit with my parents. Remember, when I was a child, right, these are the same people who bathed me, right? These are the same people who clothed me, right? So they know, they know me in, inside and outside. Even when talking about, I, I had Miss KK, I was shocked that uh, we kiss. Um, the first kiss I got it from my mom, right? And then even though she got overpowered by these people that, that come, but we're seeing that <laughs> we, we, we have to refer back you know, and, and talk to our parents. You know, our parents, they know us better, right? As much as they can be said, let me give you an example um, of someone who elopes, right? If a girl elopes, um, they, 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 you know, we, we parents, they cry, they, they, they do this, and then that person, what? They, 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 if they, and then that person goes, right? And then um, we get to a point whereby that person, again, uh, after eloping, and then has been sent back by the boyfriend, or sorry, by the husband, or both, they're now together, and then sent back home. They still accept the same person. You know, that's, that's, that's parents uh, for us. Even if we make mistakes, I, I love Isaiah 118. You know, that's where I put our parents there. Uh, come now, let us listen to us uh, to, together. No matter how bad I've been as a child, I always get back to a point whereby I know that uh, even if my mother will beat me, or even if I, I know of a parent when I used to, this one church, you know, she even had to beat one of her sons who was married and had children, said, Rukne Samurora, yo. and then she took a whip, and then, you know, like, you know, because they are our parents, you know, whenever we make these mistakes in life, because remember, when I've lost my virginity, and then I go and tell mama, mama, you know, yeah, this happened, she'll tell me, Ben, you've done this, but my son, you know, you, then stop it now, eh, stop it now, you know, because there are pros and cons, it's A, B, C, D, so, yeah, I think when there is that room, we are, we are willing also to, to, to get down and then talk to our parents. And to Miss KK, I, let me say this to, to Miss KK, it's very unfortunate that I'm not there with you today. If only I was next thing next to you, I'd be holding your hand and telling you that, Mama, um, don't put too much hope on, on, on us as, as, as children, <laughs> uh, lest you'll be surprised. Just know that we are there and we love you and we listen to you. Uh, thank you. For, for our viewers back at home, I like the only point I got from Ben is come, let us reason together. But this is the last time you're going to see Ben on this <laughs> set because uh, there's no hope in this segment. We're coming to the end of this section, but we'll not go until uh, Pastor Dickett does so. But uh, let me say we've also, uh, I've got a question that I'm going to bring at the end of the uh, section. So we are going to invite uh, an advocate to come and join us. Uh, so after Pastor Dickett, nice, short and sweet, I would want Mrs. KK to give us some parting words uh, as advocate will come and join us and we we'll talk about uh, the issues to do with marriage pastor ticket make oh, it short and sweet my i think i think we're being fictitious i think we're being very fictitious we're being hollywood okay or bollywood um i can imagine if my daughter had to come to me and say to me sit down we have a very good relationship we tell each other get away get away and that's it but we love each other it's my daughter I can imagine she comes to me and says, Ish, I made a mistake. Oh, what, what, mistake what, did, what, what mistake did you make? Mm -hmm. uh, I lost my virginity. I think I'm colored before I'm a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and I think she will invoke the coloredness yeah. before the pastorness. Mm -hmm. Because the amount of disappointment mm -hmm. will be so overwhelming vis-a-vis -vis the investment not that i really wanted to pay back i'm saying i want you to have a life that i didn't have mm. then you go and make the mistakes i made and so yet i, I invested are you more. saying you made okay sorry you no, go no, ahead. no no I'm just saying. <laughs> so i'm saying if yeah. i if i was listening sure, to sure, me now sure, sure. Mm. on this program mm. the risk of going to tell my parents that I've lost my virginity, vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the rest of just keeping quiet and just supporting them out of love, I'm going to lose it anyway. <laughs> I think I'll take the route to just lose it anyway. In without, the past. without them knowing. Yeah, because even my person, if you didn't ask if I've lost it, I may fix it that it's lost somewhere in the line. <laughs> and we never know because sometimes being honest is a disaster. Mm. Mm. 
And sometimes being honest without supportive a cultural parents. Especially in a judgmental world. Yeah, in, in that, with judgmental parents. Mm. Parents are good, but we are judgmental. You know that. Mm. If she walks mm. like this, she's walking like how I used to walk. That means she's about to. We are like that. <laughs> so I'm saying, uh, what we are saying is, where you can, and where you put all your pros and cons, you may go and say, Mommy, I've lost my virginity. Where you can tell that that will be everything you do, you didn't wash plates. That's why you lost your virginity. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't. It'll be a reference point. The reason why you lost your virginity is because you don't listen. It become a, a what do you call it? T- a case in point. Terms of reference, right? T- mm-hmm. TNCs. <laughs> so everything will be that. There, there are some times where the disappointment we handle them differently. Mm. So I'm saying, let's not come up with a, a fictitious method. Mm. We will be broken. We'll be disappointed. And how we handle our breakage within us determines the relationship with... That's why Ma, when she said, tell me so that I can reduce the bride price. <laughs> In my hearing was, oh, so the value has been lost. This is a human being. It brings me to the story of Mary Magdala. Mm. She was called after the city. Yeah, of course. Because if there were men who knew her, the man who was holding the stone, the only man who may not have known Mary was Jesus. Yeah. Because she was caught in a dark by herself. Mm. And there were philosophers there. I mean, honestly, how? It's impossible. Yes. So I'm saying to you that Mary was told, I see no, no wrong in you. Go and say no what? No more. No more. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we learn as we go. There's some things that even if you tell your parents, won't make, they won't make them love you more. <laughs> Mrs. D- Mrs. KK, before you before you go, uh, but I'm, I'm I'm actually liking the way it's unfolding um, and the pros and cons that we have to uh, look into uh, before you lift the set because we're going to have advocate to just probably look at something in there. Uh, what could be your parting words, and then um, we will see you when you see us again. Thank you, Pastor um, Uncle Ivan. You know my parting words. To let me start with the young people. You are our children, yes. You are answerable to us, yes, as your parents. But remember, with or without us, there is God with you. So whatever you are going to do, you may say, mommy doesn't know, daddy doesn't know. Yes, we don't know, but God knows. Mm. And also, I do understand that at times these things do happen, like what Ben said. Um, not because of your own making. In that case, then checks and balances are required. Why? Because we are not in perfect homes. Sometimes you're staying with um, stepmoms and dads, and it's something that can't be discussed. But even where you're having your real mom and your real dad, you really know you are not, the environment is just not that good. Well, then. I would suggest, where possible, find someone to talk to. Because you don't want this to grow into a habit where you have slept this once, but it's not going to end that once. You continue to sleep, and it's not good for you. So you better find someone whom you can talk to so that you are assisted in the best way forward. But above all, as a parent, I am saying I have you as my child. I see purity in you. And purity in you must be preserved. Mm. With God, all things are possible. Thank you, Mrs. KK. And guys at home, please be safe. COVID-19 is real. Uh, Make sure you mask up, you sanitize, and do whatever you do. Uh, Join us after the break. God bless you. Business and money. Now, what is money? Why do you need money? How to run a business? Doing the right thing at the wrong time is a wrong thing. Tell someone to go to the and I can see. But I can't see. 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 I can
Unaona kuti muna mato kuitire wewe. Kumbira urambe wakatarisa. Siri zinoi. Icha kubetera kwa. Nekuti ticha pete nura. Neku via kwa zo. Nyaze mari. Nebe zonosa. Welcome back to Reality Table, and guess what? We've got the uh, popular Athamara. You know, I mean, of course, with popular Uncle Ivan. I mean, hey, Dicket, you're not yet popular, no, so no, don't no, worry. Well, right? come down the line. <laughs> yes, we've got uh, Advocate Athamara uh, to help. I, I've got a question, eh? and I think Pastor Dicket also has the same question. Mm -hmm. But let's let's take it to to the UK first and yes. find out I, what will be. I have a question for Rumi. Okay. From what Mommy said before uh, she left. Let me give you the honors. Yeah. Take, take uh, the question. Rumi, I know you are in the, the UK and all. I'm, I'm appealing to your Zimbabwean side. <laughs> I want to ask a question. In fact, let me ask two questions. Do you think your loved one, or your loved one to be, or your loved one currently, whatever, your person should be charged to love you? Second question is, do you think one who has been sleeping before marriage should be charged less. Mm. It's like you read my mind. I almost was going to ask that. I'm trying to ask the same question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, over to you, Ruby. Okay, uh, first question is, do I think the person I should marry should be charged? I think it's, uh, I think it's really controversial. What do I think? I think, personally, I don't think I've got a choice. I think it's part of culture. This person, and I see it more as someone, m more than someone being charged. I see it as families coming together, the whole roller process. I see it as something beautiful, families coming together, getting to know each other, um, the bride being, well, the woman to be being married into the family. I know I hear about these extortionate, like, you know, prices for example, like 17,000. And I think, where is he supposed to get that from? So that's the part I, I, I'm not comfortable with. But um, the whole thing, the whole pain thing, I think. Sorry, mate, uh, sorry, uh, sorry to I, I. Okay, the seventeen thousand. Since you are in the UK and we are in Zimbabwe, you must differentiate. Is it bond or? Is, I, mean, <laughs> <you're doing laughs> I was thinking US dollars. Even uh, if you, okay. if it's it's scary. It puts people off. It's scary when I meet guys. They're like, oh, you're from Zimbabwe. Eee, do they do the bola? Do your family do that? I'm like, yeah, it still happens. They're like, okay, but <laughs> it, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Um, the second question about um, do I about depreciating value? Okay, I'll be honest. We are living in 2020. One. If you put uh, you 2021, yeah. Do I, okay, even if we were living in 2021, do I think a woman's value is depreciated because she's had sex? No. Um, I, at the same time, I also think in the context of the current world, if you were to put 15 Adventist women right here, right now, I'm 27, age 27, who grew up in Zimbabwe, they could all be past with kids or whatever. Half of them, will they be virgins? Probably not. Are they going to tell their parents? Probably not. This is the society that we're living in. I don't, I, I don't know how it would come up if someone was to have that kind of conversation with their parents. Um, so do I think someone's value depreciates uh, or should depreciate? I don't think it should depreciate. At the same time, I don't know how it would even come up. Before the role, oh, by the way, mommy, charge cheaper because I'm not a virgin. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, to me, it, it doesn't, it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, but, you know, that's just my own personal opinion. So, Rumbi, uh, let me put you on the spot, uh, just in case we might lose you. Uh, I just want to ask one question. Ask Ben and come to the advocate. When your, pers your personal person has actually paid the money, which I think you are not, well, since you said culturally you could accept that. When they have paid, uh, would you rather wait uh, another six months preparing for a wedding or you could just go straight to him and start your life? <laughs> this is a tricky question. This is a very tricky question. What do I think? I think that if I wanted to, this is the truth. If I wanted to, I think it's an option for me. No, 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 no. Rumi, yeah. I think you're missing the question. The question is, what would you do? What would I do? Not what do you think you'll do? Like, where do you stand on just that me, question? 
No marriage, I'm not going I'm not going to your house. Until you marry me and we sign that certificate, I'm not coming to your house. I will not be cooking you food. I will not be cleaning anything for you. You will not catch me there. Let me have my certificate. Everybody sees dun 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 we're together. To me it's an option. That's that me personally, I will, you will you will not you will not see anything from me. You will nothing until I, I think, have a certificate. I think Pastor Daryl's prayer has been answered. Let your Zimbabwean uh have a uh, your Zimbabwe nature. I look to continue. <laughs> Let me come to you. Bad, bad, bad. I like this guy, man. Eh? I think I'll be your marriage officer. If you decide to get married, yeah. I think we're all gonna be his marriage officer. <laughs> so Ben. Uh, once you have paid the bride price, would you? Are you uh, taking the woman? Are you taking are you the taking woman? Yeah. Home? All right. Yes, thank you so much. Um, saying, are you taking her home? All of her. Are you taking all of her home? Thank you so much, Juwet of pastors. <laughs> uh, you know, these pastors. Hey, sh- all right, fine. Um, let me give you two answers. Um, one, I'm going to give you my my answer as Ben. Then two. I'm going to give you an answer from a friend. The church one. Mm. Uh, from a friend. So, my answer, um, I don't know, maybe because I was raised within the church, right? So, um, yeah, when I, get, when I get to pay my, my money, I'll have to wait for, for the wedding. And then we sign in those papers, just like what my fellow Rumbi has said. And um, then, yeah, I, I, I get the person, right, officially, so that I know that uh, this is... This is now officially mine. Um, where well, I'll go back to that one from Genesis, born of my bond. <laughs> Let me just end there. Now, um, now I'll speak I'm for really my friend. Welcome you to know, the reality table. My, my, my friend emphasized, um, you know, uh, it's only that my friend can't be on the show right now because um, of course, stay there, stay there. You stay there. <laughs> so I'll, I'll speak for you. You know what my friend is saying? <laughs> <laughs> ben, uh, when my guy pays money, I have to go with him. He's my guy. Uh, what's the point of staying behind uh, when someone has paid? He has paid the money, so we have to go home together. Even that's the very same night. Let us go. That's from my friend. Uh, and it's a she. Hey, she. Hey, you're strong. You. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, Ben, for giving us your friend. Before I come to pass the ticket, um advocate once again welcome to well, reality thank table so thank you. uh well unfortunately because of covid 19 we could be we couldn't be with the young people you'd actually uh, hear them and normally we are about six but you know um could you kindly kindly tell us the type of marriages that are there uh, or the chapters maybe let me let me put it that way oh, all right uh, pretty much we're talking about three um the first one you know order of priority by the way um, is uh, your civil marriage, which is a chapter 5.11 marriage. 5.11? Yes, chapter 5.11. I think this is the most called, common one. Uh, mm-hmm. Chapter 37. I think uh, you and Agogo were saying the writer chapter 37. So that's what became chapter 5.11. So what separates it from other marriages is, number one, it's monogamous in nature. So monogamous, for one, it means it's one husband and one wife. That's chapter 5.11. Um, it also has implications, eh? Um, it, it chapter 5.11 marriage, it's presumed to be out of community of property. Okay. Which means a husband can actually own property in his own name in that marriage. And the wife can also own property from that marriage, whilst in that marriage. And um, I think if you read the press, it also has implications now in terms of inheritance. It means if you are in a chapter 5.11 marriage, right away, well, you are actually allowed to give away property, including the matrimonial house. Mm. If it was yours, you can give it to any person who is not your spouse. Mm. So it actually comes with uh, serious mm. ramifications because the by operation of the law since the 1940s, by virtue of a statute, married properties, married people properties act, is presuming all uh, properties to be out of community or property. That's in, in respect of chapter 5. Point, uh, Point eleven. Then chapter five point zero nine. Which uh, sorry, is, advocate. Young people, I would want you to take your pens and your note and write these things because before you make any yeah. mistakes, you must understand what you're getting yourself into. You can go ahead, yeah. advocate. So, so the first one is chapter five point eleven, which is the civil marriage. Um, the civil marriage is what people usually call a church wedding. And just to clarify, if you 
word in church, you are not different from a person who goes before a magistrate or a marriage officer and gets that, that same certificate. It has the same legal effect. The difference that people drive the poor thousands to celebrate and uh, say ta ta cha ta, as it were. But of course, my personal opinion is. Uh, just get a certificate. You can still get a marriage officer. You can still appear before uh, your marriage officer if he's a pastor and get the blessings and start your marriage. It was pretty much in Africa. The, the pressure really is uh, you should just wear the gown and so forth. The gown is not a legal requirement, by the way. Um, you can actually get married whilst they're wearing anything decent. Just sign the certificate <laughs> and you're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So I think people also don't get to hear that other side because, you see, marriages in, in Africa, they are very expensive. But the, the expensive bit usually is the wedding okay. because you're, you're, you're parting with thousands of dollars. And uh, a number of times people start marriages in debt just because they wanted to wear that gown and to, to ensure that people see. So I really think pretty much your finances should also guide you. Then, so once we're done with Chapter 5.11, the second one is... Uh, Chapter 5.07, it's your African customary marriage. So remember the Lobola thing, that's a customary practice, which uh, is now being embraced even by people who are doing the Chapter 5.11. By the way, for Chapter 5.11, Lobola is not a legal requirement. I need to stress that point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not a legal requirement. It's not prohibited. Uh, please don't say it uh, so loud because Ben, if he hears this, I think you'll take advantage of this. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I need to clarify something. It's not prohibited sure, sure, to charge sure. mm. But it's, it's not a legal, legal requirement, requirement if yeah. you want to get a chapter 5.11. So the, the only requirement is you need someone who is healthy. Uh, by health, I mean mentally. Uh, you need someone who is 18 and you need two witnesses who can simply um, sign and witness. Then, of course, you need to give the notice in case somebody wants to file an objection. So I just want to clarify that bit. Then chapter 5.07, what it simply does is it's now registering the African customary marriages. But the difference between the 5.11 and this one is that number one, this one is no longer monogamous. It allows the husband to have several mm. wives. Mm. So if you see the deal with another woman, don't get angry. He's planning on a second one. <laughs> so, so that's, uh, that's your African customer. Marriage. So, that's so, five point. So, so five let point me understand this. Yeah. It's, it's like legal to have that second woman in yeah, that yes, marriage. It's, it's actually very legal. because It's, it's not monogamous. Yeah. It's potentially polygamous. Okay. That, that's the description. It's potentially polygamous. So chapter 5.11, if you find your, your, your husband with another woman, you can actually sue for adultery. Okay. But in 5.07, if you found your husband with another woman, you have no cause of action. Can I put a disclaimer to the girls listening? Yes, please. So, girls, if the guy wants to take you for a 5.07, upgrade to 5.11. <laughs> because that one is safe for you. Yeah, well, you that's can... the current software that's <laughs> yes, running. That's the current software that is it's running. Yes. So, so, you can upgrade from 5.07 to 5.11, but you can't downgrade... Ah, come and listen to this. Yeah, you can't downgrade this. No. We want to apologize to Ben, wherever you are. No downgrading. Five point one one. Five point one one. So you can't. So the third one. So the the five point zero seven, it's in community of property. Oh, okay. So in community of property, the presumption is you own the property together. Four shares. Meaning, it can add my koromora uko. The sheriff can properly come for your property, both of you. And recover his dues. That's marriages which are in community of property. So if in community of property, even in your will, you can't give away property to whoever you want. Because the property, the presumption is you own the property in equal shares. So that's 5.07. Then the third one, that's the unregistered customary law union. The unregistered customary law union, which is what many people are in, you go and you, you say, I want this, you, you go through, follow through the processes. And you are given your, your your wife as it were, but for legal purposes, it's not deemed a marriage, only for exceptional cases. So, the exceptional case number one is for purposes of inheritance. So, if you die today, and you didn't know if a registered marriage, but of course it can be proven that you guys with that setup, uh, it's re it's recognized for purposes of inheritance. It's also recognized for purposes of uh, maintenance. In other words, if uh, your spouse says. You have an obligation to look after me, maintaining. Uh, you are deemed to also be in, in a marriage. 
uh, and maintenance of the child as well. So you can actually be sued properly for maintenance of the child by, by virtue of that. And thirdly, it's recognized as a marriage for purposes of uh, bigamy. So if you are registered in a chapter 5.11, remember I said it's, it's monogamous in nature. Mm -hmm. So if you take a woman and say, because this is just a union, it's not a marriage, that, that, that is disregarded. So for purposes of proving that you manage to get another marriage, uh, that unregistered thing is recognized as a marriage. So you can be properly convicted for bigamy. Then um, the, the, the last instance, I talked about maintenance, I talked about bigamy, I talked about what? About inheritance, I think pretty much that. But for, for other instances, it's not, it's not actually a marriage. It's not actually a marriage. So, well, so have, we I don't want to water question. down what I, I have, have said. But yes. I have a question. If, if I'm a young person watching this right now, yes, please. And I'm assuming you're you are you are a Christian. No, of course. Which one? You're not telling me what to do, mm -hmm. but in your experience, I'm sure you seek divorces every day of your life. Yeah, yeah. Which one of the two would you recommend for me? I have this girl I like, and I really want to marry her. All right. So what, what I'll tell you, marriage is really personal and runs on preferences. Uh, but most importantly, I think it's weighing the, 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 the pros and the cons of each setup. Um, so I've explained that if it's 5.11, it's, 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 it's out of community, meaning you can properly acquire your properties. But you see, even if you're not saving a 5.11, um, you can still be involved in legal disputes should something go complicated along the way because there's always an element of property sharing which attracts a lot of attention. I think you've seen quite a number of, uh, of cases. Yep. But, but, but what I think is for the young people getting married, don't get into marriage out of excitement. Get it based on knowledge. Uh, get proper guidance. Um, get to be advised as to what you're getting yourself into and what you're committing. But I say a number of people, they just think, no, I'm old. But being old does not qualify and make you ready for marriage. <laughs> you can still rush into yeah. marriage, immature, yet you've got a shocking number of years. Yeah. And you still find yourself being a liability in, in whatever marriage. So my, my advice is purely, I think, it's a choice which the parties need to discuss. And um, the, the obvious advantage of Chapter 5.11 is, yeah, me, the certificate gives you entitlement to say, this is my own person. So if someone decides to have a baby with your husband when you've got a 5.11 marriage, um, what is only recognized are simply the proceeds from that arrangement. So if children are born, they are entitled to maintenance, they are also entitled to inheritance. But the so-called smell house is not entitled to anything because <laughs> that <laughs> yes, will not stand smell in the face of, uh, of a chapter 5 point law because by operation of the law it's, it's, uh, it's monogamous. So you find many people who are being told, no, I've divorced, blah, 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 all, all, all sorts of lies. So that's why if you're a young person, please stay away from married people. And uh, if you're a young person as well, yeah, please try to, to explain to each other and also get advice as to which type of marriage would work well for you. But definitely an African type of marriage where polygamy is an option, ah, if you're a Christian, I don't think it's a good setup. Wow. Because ordinarily you'll be setting yourself up for trouble. Thank you, Advocate. Uh, well, um, I'm also just excited that I'm on the set with you, right? Uh, and you should be excited as well that you have him uh, giving you this legal advice free of charge because you're on reality table. Well, I don't want to water down uh, these powerful words that the Advocate has given us. So, Pastor Dickett, I'll just give you a, a minute just to uh, give advice to the young people across. Afterwards, we are going to... Uh, honor our advocate maybe just give also uh, a few words and then you will also pray for us to end reality table on this uh, blessed day pastor ticket about a minute or so yes i want to say that marriage is a lifelong covenant you want to enjoy marriage not to enjoy it and uh, people change of course and you don't know which side people change in i may not know all the legal um advices to the different type of chapters but there's one that I think should be number one, and that's uh, faithfulness. You don't want someone to be unfaithful in your marriage. It kills you mentally, physically, it kills you spiritually. So you can be walking, but you can be dying on the inside. So choose the one that will better help you serve God. Because you know when you're heartbroken, you can't serve God. You can't. So choose the one that will... Marriage, in fact, spiritual prophecy says, 
our homes should be little heavens. On this planet. People should go to heaven because of our homes. So if the participants in the homes that are there 24-7 are not going anywhere, no one in that home will go anywhere. So my advice is, let's take the one with the legal advice that has been given. Take the one that represents the godliness in you. But if you do want to take the ones where there's potential polygamy, May God bless you and my condolences as you go along. <laughs> well, uh, Pastor Dickie will always give that to you. But don't turn your, your wedding bliss into your wedding blisters because of the choices that you have made. Wow, thank you for joining us on Reality Table. Uh, the next voice you're going to hear is the voice of Advocate Marara. You just give us uh, some, uh, you just give us some farmers of thought and afterward you pray pray for us and we meet again next week as we discuss more hot potatoes affecting young people uh advocate it will be our honor for you to dismiss That's this right. program no, I'll, I'll do that then the pastor is going to pray for us i also want to benefit from the prayer oh okay you see if you marry the right person and what a prayer partner if you marry the wrong person and what a prayer point so i, I think it's, <laughs> it's very important for for people to realize that uh, like what uh, the pastor say it's very important who you choose to marry you see, I, I tell people there are two ways to die quickly. Number one, choose the wrong career. And number two, choose the wrong person to marry. If you do that, that's a very perfect recipe for you to die early. So that's why I really believe we, we need to continuously invest in such programs, getting to learn yeah. and getting to see, okay, what are the do's and don'ts. And you see, who you marry determines how far you can go. Some will destroy your dreams. Some will enlarge your dreams. Yeah. Some will bring you down some will even kill you physically yeah and that's why the bible says it's only the lord who can give an understanding wife yeah and understanding wife i also mean it, it also means an understanding husband i think it's very important sure. because we we're living in a fast generation where everything is happening fast fast relationships everything is so fast you're talking about virginity yeah, the leverage which people are moving at the piece of excitement you see reason and the brain is being relegated. Yeah. And some people are making patently dubious decisions when it comes to spouses. Mm. And the next thing, when they're in trouble, they're now saying, God, you've abandoned me. Exactly. When you abandoned God in the first place. That's it. So I, I really That's think it. it's, it's very important to make a wise decision and uh, get proper mentorship. And you know what? Don't just have a relationship. You know, to know it's good. You see, <laughs> get to expose Mnuako and get independent, impartial, free of emotions and opinion. You see, no, they, they don't reason. Mm. No, I don't want to hear your jealousy. No, I'll see you through thick and thin. No, I'll fight with you. Oh, some things you don't actually need to fight for because they'll end up fighting you. Yeah. But you see, for, for our generation, I think the default setting is, no, I'll stand with you. Ah, you. You can stand with the wrong person and they'll sink you. Mm. Yeah. And so... No, seeing the rate of divorces, I've had the privilege of, not privilege really, I've had really, the unfortunate instance whereby I've actually turned into some of the matters, not just from people of the world, but from Christians. Hmm. And the question is, where did you go wrong? It went wrong from the foundations. Yeah. Foundations. That's why I think it's very important to get a person who really loves God, not just go to church, who really loves God and is based on the foundation of the principles of the Word of God. And guess what? That will give you a peace of mind. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'd forget, I'm going to put you on the spot. Well, um, I'm sure Mandara Online is working on a uh, live streaming where you actually get people commenting and responding. Once that is in place, I'm sure I would really want you to come back on set so that you. young people can ask questions and then you can respond as we go. Uh, and he has asked for a, a pastoral blessing. Now I'm looking at the two of us to say, who, has more, who is more holier? So he's asked for a pastor, so let me pray. Sure. Ah. <laughs> pastor Dickett says he asked for a pastor. I'm an uncle and he's a pastor. So Pastor Dickett, uh, you can uh, close the program for us with a prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you Lord for the thank discussion you. that we've had. It has been an elephant in the room for the longest of time. We didn't fully discuss it, but we discussed enough of it. Father, as we are young people contemplating marriages, contemplating relationships, God, be the center of what we decide. Help us to take advice and counsel so that we don't make decisions that are detrimental even to our awaiting for the second coming. I want to pray for the young people out there who are in different situations. Give them strength, Lord, and give them power to know that they can make it if they put you first and last in everything that they do. I want to pray for the marriages that are out there. Some are struggling, some are strong, 
Whatever the situation, Lord, please intervene. I pray that, Lord, you may be with each and every one of us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you once again for joining us at Reality Table. And you see, we have put it a notch higher. Join us again next week as we discuss the Black Panther. God bless you. Nangi so nesibi Nizai nkosini Watige kamali gache sunga Watoru gukululwa Wesu mtandazo wami Wangi tetele la Wangi ngetula umfalo Wangi shia ngetulo Nangi so nesibi Nizai nkosini Watige kamali gache sunga Watoru gukululwa Wezu mtandazo wami Wangi tetele la Wangi ngetula mtwalo Wangi shia ngetulo Yebo wetulu mtwalo Wala umahula Yebo wetulu mtwalo Mtandazo wami Walorwami wape Wajesu wafusu moya wami Wangi ngetula mtwalo Wangi shia ngetulo Yebo wetulu mtwalo Wala umahula Yebo wetulu mtwalo Mtandazo wami Walorwami wape Wajesu wafusu moya wami Wangi ngetula mtwalo Wangi shia ngetulo Wangi tula mtwalo Wangi shia ngetanze kile Wangi tula mtwalo Wangi shia ngetanze kile Kusi jesu ya ngetanda Kusi jesu ya mutanda Kusi jesu wangi fena na mfo Espambanwe ni Espambanwe ni Kusi jesu ya ngetanda Kusi jesu ya mutanda Kusi jesu wangi fena na mfo Espambanwe ni Ujesu wa Wangi tula umtwalo wangi shia ngetanze kile Jesu wame wangi tula umtwalo wangi shia ngetanze kile Ngizo mete mbanjalo Mubu ya ya sindela Uzo ngihola Jesu Angi segeli Angi segeli Zuli ni ngolanda Ngibu nga paka Jesu Mubu ya tulu Wangi tulu Nizo mete banjalo Mubu ya ya sinvela Uzo ngihola jesu Angisege nina Nizule ni ngolanda Ngibo nga paka jesu Mubu ya tulu Wangi tulu Wangishi ya ngetulu Yebo ya tulu mtwalo Wala unga kula Yebo ya tulu Wangi ngetula umtwalo, wangi shia ngetulo